Hey everyone, Steven here. In today's video, I want to go over Sutter Central really quickly, just what to click, where everything is. And then I'll probably dive deeper into specific, like how to request payments, removing feedback, and looking at reports and such. I just want to take a moment and tell you guys really quickly that most of the time I'm not spending inside Seller Central. Most of the time I'm spending inside the third party softwares that have the same information and data that's synced over to those third party softwares. And the software I primarily use to view all this information, to adjust prices, to look at different reports and data is going to be the Seller 365 software bundle. It includes inventory labs, smart repricer, feedback with tactical arbitrage, and a bunch more tools that you could pretty much run your entire Amazon business with. So that was a quick note. I haven't visited every single page on Seller Central. There's just a bunch of information on here that you might not really use for your business at all. So keep that in mind. Let's continue on with this tutorial. When you first log in, this is going to be your command center, your dashboard view. So you're going to see your home button right here, Amazon Seller Central. You can refresh it, your store. You can see that there's a bookmark section here. You might not have anything there yet. I'll show you how to add all of that. We have some action items right here, like things that you need to do. Don't worry about the reactivate part. This is just an old account. And then you'll see a snapshot of your sales, your orders, any buyer messages you need to get back to any seller feedback that you received and anything you can remove. And then you'll also see your payments and ad sales and just an overview of what's going on in your business. And by the way, you can always adjust what you want to see. So let's say you don't want to look at something like global sales. You can always remove that or like ad impression. You don't really need to look at that. So you can remove. You can also move things around as well. So if you don't like the current view, you can always adjust it on how you like to see it. If you scroll down a little bit more, you'll see this forum section where a lot of people would ask questions or try to get some answers to things. There's also some polls here and some seller news over here this is pretty new this is your product performance that tells you the total sales for each specific product you add inside your inventory and then if you scroll down a little more there's some recommendations and things like that but most of the time you'll take a quick look at your sales and your orders and any messages that you need to respond to so if we go over here to the top left area you're gonna see this little menu bar right here i call this like the hamburger bar if you click it this is where you could dive deeper into the entire Amazon selling business. So if we take a look at catalog, this is where you're able to add new products into your current inventory. So as you may know, Amazon has millions and millions of products. So in order for you to start selling these products, you have to add them into your inventory first. So if you click add product, it's going to take you to this page where you could add the title, the UPC, the ASIN, in order to find that specific product. You could also upload a spreadsheet of all the products you want to add into your inventory as well. And this is the first step to starting to sell a product is that you want to start adding it to your inventory to see if you're even approved to sell it first before you move on to buying. So if we go back to the menu bar and then go to catalog, you can see I have this bookmarked right up here add product so all you have to do is click the bookmark you can remove it or add it you could do this with any other tabs that we go through right here but these are the ones that i visit the most so i had them bookmarked the next tab we're going to jump to is going to be the view selling applications right so this is going to be all your approvals to sell a specific brand a specific asin a specific category or subcategory and this is where you're going to see all the brands that you're approved for or declined for and anything that's currently a draft that you can upload an invoice in order to get approved for. You could also filter it by specific category, uh, subcategory, ASIN, or brand. If we go back to the menu and then we go down to inventory and you click on manage all inventory, this is going to be all your added inventory into your own catalog. So these are all the products that I've already added in my inventory that I could send in to Amazon FBA or ship it to the customer via FBM. And this is also where you're going to be managing any inventory issues. For example, fixed listing issue right here. I could click that and then I could request approval, which would take me to that selling application page where I could request approval. And as you can see, it will ask you to submit an invoice in order to get approved to sell soda screen. So we're just going to go back right here on this manage inventory page. You're also able to change the quantity. If you have FBM products that you have stored at your house or your warehouse or somewhere, let's say I have five of this over there. I'll just update it and save all. Now, this is the place where you're also able to 
add your pricing for that specific product. So my current price is $29.99. I'm also able to set a minimum price and a maximum price for my repricer. Again, you could reprice on Seller Central, but what I would suggest is you get a third-party repricer because third-party repricers are more advanced. You're able to integrate it with accounting softwares and you're able to just do more things on the third-party repricer than on the Amazon repricer. And just a quick note, the repricer I use is a smart repricer. It's part of the Seller 365 software bundle. And that's the bundle that I recommend every single seller because it's only $69 a month and you get 10 different softwares included. But back to the tutorial. If you ever need to remove a product, you could click this three dots right here and delete the listing or close the listing. You could also edit the listing if you need to add any more information onto the listing. And if you have a product that is FBM and you want to change it to FBA, you could click change to fulfill by Amazon as well. And if you ever need to change the FBM shipping template for a specific product, you could also do that here as well. If you click on the title, it will actually take you to the listing page. That's where you can review all the information there. But let's go back. Now, the next place we're going to go to is going to be shipments within the inventory. We're going to go down here to shipment. So this is where you're going to be able to see all the shipments that you sent out to Amazon FBA, to their warehouses. You're able to see an overview and you're able to track each shipment and see all the updates with that shipment. This is also a place where you're going to be able to reconcile all your inventory that is, let's say, lost at Amazon's warehouses. But if you don't want to do any of that manually, you can use the Seller 365 software bundle they also have a reimbursement service to help you get money back for any lost inventory and things like that. So if we go up here, you could also go to your dashboard for all your FDA inventory just to see an overview of your inventory performance and whatever selling and all the fees associated with your FBA inventory. You can also see your in-stock rate percentage, any shipment information right here, any aged inventory that you want to be charged extra fees for, your customer returns, and your storage is also available right here. Now, you can also go back here and go to your inventory and also click right here on dashboard to see the same exact page. You can also go to your FBA inventory as well. And this is where you're going to be able to see all your products, the sell-through rate, if it has any low inventory level fees, an overview of your inventory. So if any are inbound, meaning going to the Amazon fulfillment centers, if any of them are on hand available for the sale, if any of them are reserved or Amazon researching any of the inventory or any of them are unfulfillable because they're expired or damaged. You could also view your inventory age. So let's say you have inventory that you just sent in. It will appear right here from zero to 60 days. But let's say it's been inside Amazon's warehouse for a long time, over 60 days, then it'll appear right here. It'll tell you how many units appear. And then if it's been in there for, let's say, six months, it'll show you how many units have been in there for six months. You're also able to see your age inventory surcharge. So any additional fees because it's been in sport for a long time, you're able to view that as well. Again, if you go all the way here to the right and you see this little filtering thing here, you could choose what you want to see. So if you want to look at days of supply or total days of supply or inbound quantity or sellers ran, you could save the preference and then it'll update it based on the information you want to see. Now, if we go back to the menu bar and then we go to pricing, this is going to be another place you'll probably spend some time on if you don't have a repricer. So over here in pricing rules, you're able to sort by the U.S. marketplace. That's what we're selling on. And then you're able to create a custom pricing rule. OK, I'm not going to do it right now. That'll probably be another video where I dive deeper into creating uh, repricing rules, but you're able to do it right there. And then we go back to the menu bar and then go down to manage orders. This is where you're going to be seeing all your orders. So it's going to show you all your orders, but you could also see just the FDA orders as well. And then you could filter it by 30 days. And quick reminder, all of this information can be seen on Inventory Lab with your added cost of goods and whatever is profitable and stuff. Because right here, they just show you your orders, but they don't really show you your profit if you don't put any of that information in here. So let's go back to the menu bar. So over here, you're also able to create a MCF order, which is if you're selling on another marketplace and you have inventory inside Amazon, you could create an order to that customer directly from Amazon. You could also manage all your returns right here as well. Now, the next tab we're going to go to is going to be advertising. If you are spending money advertising, you're going to click on campaign manager and then it'll take you to this new page where you're able to see all your advertising campaign. I'm not going to dive too deep into this. This is like a totally different class. 
but let me go back we go to menu again and then we go down stores i don't really go there too much growth is if there's any opportunities or programs available to you as a seller if you go click on explore programs they'll show you all the different programs that amazon has but if you also go down to growth and then go to lending they'll show you all the available lending options that Amazon will provide you. Now if we go back here and then we go down to reports. These are all the different types of reports that you could view. And if you go into, let's say, business reports, you can see even more reports like sales and traffic, seller performance by ASIN, all of this information. And I have to keep reminding you, all this information can be found on a software like Inventory Lab. Later on during tax season, if you need any tax documents, it could be found right here in the tax document library. If you want to look at your inventory reports, you can also view it right here but you have to generate a file. So you have to request a report and then it'll be a CSV file or a text file. Now, if we go back to the menu, my favorite place that I spend all my time on is going to be the payments. Okay, so this is where you could request payment if you have a balance with Amazon. So if you sold a lot of things, it will appear right here and then it'll tell you all the fees that Amazon has deducted and then whatever is left over, you could request payment. If you want to break down of every single transaction, you could also do that right here in the transaction view. If you want to see all your statements, it'll be right here. All your disbursements, or all your payments, it'll be right here. And then we go back to the menu bar and then we go to performance. You're probably going to spend a lot of time on account health as well. This is why I have it bookmarked. So if you have any IP complaints, any authenticity complaints, any product condition complaints, food and safety complaints, all of this will appear right here. And you have account health score. So if you have below 200, your account will be in risk of deactivation. And you have to resolve all these account health issues in a timely manner. If you need to talk to someone in the account health team, you can also contact them right here. If we go back and then go to performance, you will also spend some time in your feedback manager. So your feedback manager, this is where customers are going to leave reviews to you as a seller. And as you can see, I have this two star rating from 2023. You can remove the reviews if you send the products into Amazon FBA. So this was a chocolate candy, but I sent it to Amazon and then Amazon sent it to the customer and during shipping was damaged or something. So I was able to request a removal. You could even request removals for five star reviews, but you probably don't want to do that as you can see i have one that i didn't remove or two that i didn't remove and that's just because i didn't spend enough time removing them and i got lazy and then it's just on my account forever now now let's go back to the menu bar and then go to voice of the customer so this is where customers are able to leave reviews on the products that you sold them if you have too many very poor reviews or poor reviews Amazon is going to investigate your inventory on why you're getting so many bad reviews. Sometimes this happens when you mislabel products or you send the wrong product or let's say it's a glass product and then you just send it in as is and then it breaks when it gets to the customer all the time. So all of the customer feedback will be available right here. Now, if we go to apps and services, this is where you're able to see all the softwares that you could connect to your seller account. I'm not going to go in there real quick. The only software I recommend is going to be the Seller 365 software bundle. If we go down to B2B, this is where you're going to be able to manage your business customers and business orders. So business customers are different from regular customers. Business customers are like schools, government agencies, any small business that are buying from you. They're able to go to business.amazon.com and set up a business account where they could buy products in bulk and get discounts. Now it's up to you whether you want to offer the discounts or you want to change the business pricing separate from your regular pricing. All of the business repricing can be done on Smart Repricer, which is part of the Seller 365 bundle. If you're selling a lot of bulk products or products that businesses might need, like cleaning products, office products, or like coffee and stuff like that, that maybe some small businesses buy from Amazon. From my experience selling those products, you'll see that business orders do make up about 5 to 10% of your total order amount. So we go back to the menu bar and then we go down to brands. This is where you're going to be able to manage all your brands and all the listings under the brand. If you are doing private label, you could go right here and manage your brands. If you are doing brand direct, you could click on brand registry and get registered with that specific brand that you're taking over. And the last tab is going to be the learn section. If you ever need to look at anything specific, you could go to seller university or go to the forums. Or if you want to see any Amazon seller news, you could also go down here as well. So that was a quick overview of Amazon Seller Central and how to navigate it. The only place 
places I go consistently on Cellular Central are going to be the bookmark places up here. So my feedback manager, manage all inventory, shipments, account health, payments, view selling application, and add a product. And some of these, I don't really go on it too much anymore because all of these places and tasks can be done on third party software. For example, add a product right here is so much easier to add using Inventory Lab. And on Inventory Lab, I'm also able to see all my shipments as well. And of course, you can manage all your inventory on Inventory Lab. So that was a quick overview of Amazon Seller Central. I'll see you guys in the next video.